Jikatabi shoes are invading the USA, and soon we'll all have strong and beautiful looking feet. I'm Charlie Merrill, a physical therapist in Boulder, Colorado. I've been working with the best athletes in the world for the last 18 years, and I want to tell you about why. In 2013, minimalist shoes interrupted the athletic shoe world. They were low to the ground, they had slipper-like flexibility, and they allowed the foot to function more closely to the way it was designed. Some of these shoes even allowed the toes to move independently. Today, many athletes use minimal shoes for gym training and cross training. Some even use them for their primary sport. These athletes know that a foot that is unconstrained is strong and coordinated. They also know that many of the ailments that result from weaker, traditionally shod feet, things like back pain, hip pain, sciatica, knee pain, calf, Achilles, ankle pain, and even plantar fasciitis are a real problem if you wear a shoe with too much support. However, with the advent of super tall and foamy shoes, some of the benefits of minimal shoes have been lost to these new trends. I can tell you from my clinical experience and from the latest pain science that foot pain is on the rise and weak, sedentary, uncoordinated feet are part of the reason why. To the Japanese, the feet are a whole separate entity from the rest of the body. They consider it an appendage with special guest status that must be treated with care and respect. The Japanese invented the split toe shoe, also known as the Jikatabi, which dates back to ancient times. The samurai, and later athletes like martial artists, prefer them for their agile and reactive feel. In modern times, the shoes have been adopted by the working class, including laborers and landscapers, who spend a ton of active time on their feet because it's really the most functional and comfortable shoe to wear day in and day out. As most of Japanese culture has evolved away from wearing split toe shoes, or jikatabi, their feet have gotten weaker. Like many of us in the USA, high heels, desk work, and restrictive shoes have correlated strongly with a spike in leg and foot pain, including bunion problems. This is especially evident in Japan due to the more extreme change from a traditional jikatabi shoe and a more minimalist, fo minimalist footwear to a more American and European shoe style. As a physical therapist who's worked with foot problems for over 18 years, I feel that feet are one of the most incredible parts of the body. I really think the ancient Japanese had it right because each foot has 26 bones, 33 joints, and over 100 dedicated muscles, tendons, and ligaments. Like any body part, if you put that foot in a brace and restrict its movement, it's gonna weaken. So what do we do about it? Here's the deal, you guys. If your foot isn't able to function in its natural shape, the shape it takes without shoes, when you're in shoes, it's not gonna be good. If your foot isn't able to do what it wants because the shoe's calling the shots, bad things are gonna happen. If your foot can't feel the ground because there's too much foam in the way, you may end up in my office. And lastly, if the big toe isn't given special, a special place where it's wrapped in its own little cocoon, your feet might look like this. The bigger great toe is massive for a reason. It's unique and separate from the other toes because it has a unique role in the foot, not dissimilar from our thumb in our hand. You guys, there are three things that make the big toe super special. Number one, it's the proprioceptive anchor for the entire front part of the foot and it actually communicates with the brain about where we are in space more than any other part of the foot. Number two, it's the stable springboard when we toe off to the next step. It has to be aligned in parallel with the rest of the foot, has to have mobility or enough movement to allow it to bend back as we roll towards the next step, but then it also has to be stable or stiff enough to actually propel us like a springboard uh, our entire body weight when we're walking and running into the next step. Number three, the big toe has the most muscles, tendons, and ligaments dedicated to optimizing its mobility, how much it can move, and its stability, how stiff it can be. If you look at the lower leg and foot, there are three muscles that act like puppet strings. One comes down the inside, one comes down the front, and one comes down the outside of the foot. They wrap around the bottom of the foot to help control its function. If you look closely, you can see the insertion point in blue, green, and red for those three muscles. The one from the outside of the lower leg wraps around, crosses the foot, and attaches to the base of the big toe. The muscle on the inside of the lower leg comes down, attaches where the blue dots are, and they actually cross and form an X right at the base of the big toe and the midfoot bones. 
The third muscle comes down from the front of the lower leg and attaches right into the base of the big toe as well, opposite from the muscle I talked about initially. So this whole part of the base of the big toe has three super strong important muscles dedicated just to its stability and its mobility. To go further though, the bottom of the foot has its own set of muscles. One that runs along the big toe in parallel, one that cuts diagonally from the midfoot across to the base of the big toe proper, and a third one that runs horizontally across the base of the foot to attach to the same spot. So we have a massive amount of muscular and tendon attachment at the base of the toe uh, and the midfoot, and then a whole separate set of muscles that are dedicated to the big toe proper and its function. You guys, the big toe is so important that it actually has its own dedicated part of the brain separate from toes two through five. Not surprisingly, in foot reflexology and in Asian medicine, the big toe represents the brain itself. It's actually considered the brain of the foot. Many of us lose our ability to control the big toe independently from the other toes, which, re which results in a loss of anchoring of the foot and really instability of the foot. A dumb big toe is one step away from losing part of your brain. Bunions are just one great example of your loss of your first toe control. So while Jikatabi may seem a bit exotic at first glance, it's no accident the first toe is separated from the others. But there are a few other features that make this particular shoe unique. Number one, your foot's closer to the ground so you can better feel the terrain. Our feet love this and they adapt, resulting in better balance. Number two, the profile of the bottom of the shoe is rounded and eased rather than squared off and angular like most modern shoes. There's no coincidence that your heel and foot actually is rounded like this. It's the same shape as this shoe. This prevents ankle sprains and other traumatic foot injuries. Number three, the shoe is super flexible and allows all 26 bones in the foot to move as they were designed relative to one another. Since your foot acts like a shock absorber, the flexibility and shape of this shoe allows your foot to splay and the toes to spread as you come down on that foot. This is gonna significantly reduce impact forces up into the knee, the hip, and the back. The shoe also allows the foot to regain its stiff shape before you toe off, so you can launch onto the other foot as the foot was designed. Number four, the heel and forefoot are actually in the same plane. Unlike a lot of modern shoes where the heel is elevated compared to the ball of the foot, a flat shoe allows your foot to operate the way it was designed. This is gonna assure you don't lose ankle mobility, it's gonna reduce stress on the ball of your foot, and it's gonna allow your knees, hips, and ankles to live in a more neutral, healthy position. Jikatabi shoes are the best example of a minimal training shoe that I've seen to date. It checks many of the boxes that PTs in the know feel are critical to health and performance. I hope you'll give this shoe a try during your next training session, the next time you travel, or at the office, and you'll not only get a ton of attention, but your feet will be stoked.